A man can have two bodies, the one he was born with and the one he makes for himself. Now, I don't mean to sound envious when I say it, but there is a lot in these advertisements which promise you muscles on your muscles, but only if you work at it. And men like Paddy Byrne work at it hard. In gymnasiums like the Apollo Club in Dublin, in Cork, in Belfast, young and not so young men are sweating their guts out to achieve a magnificent sculpturing of flesh and blood. For a lot of them, this is an end in itself, for they'll not use many of these overdeveloped muscles in their everyday work or even in other sports. The truth is, they can really do without them. It gives them a satisfaction just to look good, but it's a hard-won satisfaction. The talk here is about lats and abs, about weights and triceps, about exercises and discs and developing machines. And the machines themselves look like something out of medieval torture chambers. What would you do, for instance, with a squat rack? Break a man's bones on it, maybe? Pull his arms out of their sockets? Well, no. They use a squat rack here to exercise thighs and calves. The abdominal board tortures those stomach muscles until they look like washboards. The latissimus machine develops the latissimi, that group of muscles that covers part of the rib cage. And all the time, there's weightlifting. As a beginner, you'd probably start with five pound discs, but there are men here who find it no bother at all to hoist up 300 pounds, in many cases, more than their own body weight. The advanced man works and thinks in terms of tonnage rather than just poundage. To the casual observer, all this pulling and shoving and striving to do the near impossible looks sometimes positively dangerous. One would fear for the effect of all this on that great muscle, the heart, or expect at the very least a smart double rupture on occasion. But it's all pretty well supervised. Accidents are remarkably rare, and there's one Kerry man well into his seventies who comes in here for a workout quite regularly. It's understandable, I suppose, that one should be prepared to put a lot of effort into just keeping fit. And a lot of men who come here take these exercises for that very reason. They don't overdo it. They're athletes in other fields keeping in trim. But it's the purists that we're interested in here, not the weightlifters, not the wrestlers, not the racing cyclist developing his legs in the winter time for the summer season, or the footballer or the runner. The body beautiful builder stands out on his own. He's interested only in the rippling pectoral, a swelling calf muscle, the jutting of a scapula, the gyration of biceps and triceps. Because this is what it's really all about. This is what he must do when he's in competition. Stand in front of the judges and get in there and ripple. Billy Higgins, secretary of the Irish Amateur Weightlifting Association, is a frequent judge at bodybuilding competitions. Billy, why do they do it? Why do they, they want to develop beautiful bodies? Well, I suppose there are a number of reasons. reasons. It probably starts, uh, a man wants to improve his physique, you see. He's tired of his pipe stem type arms, so he decides to do something about it. That may be one of the ways. Other chaps come along to use weight training as an assistance for other sports. And they get bitten by the bug with the result that they forget their other sports and concentrate on bodybuilding. Well, now, when they do uh, build up their bodies and they do get these beautiful bodies, how much of this would you say was personal vanity? Well, we must admit there must be a certain amount of, uh, well, vanity, if you like. He comes in, the beginner, you see, and after a few months, he finds that his physique is improved out of all bounds, and then he carries on from there. There are a number of people who fall by the wayside, of course. They don't make the progress they expected. It's a very strict regimen, is it? 
certainly they work very hard. They generally do three to four workouts a week. Those workouts can take something like two to three hours each. So it's a serious business for them? Oh, they regard it as a very serious sport. It's their sport and they work very hard at it. Well, once you get all these muscles, uh, the object surely is just to display them. There's no other use for them. Well, they're not giving uh, a possibility to do other than display them on the night of a contest, for instance. And uh, on the night of the contest, that's all they do. They display them to their very best advantage. Uh, about... Uh, it's hard to say, really. They don't get an opportunity to do other than display them on the night of the competition. So, so really, having got the muscles and looking magnificent, they just have this brief opportunity to display their muscles, and that's, that's it, as it were, for a year again, is it? The major ones for a year, yes. And uh, I suppose there are other compensations, like looking well at other sports, at the swimming pool, on the beach, playing football, tennis, golf, what have you. So that to some extent they are seeking admiration? To some extent, I said that's correct. Are these the only rewards there are for, for bodybuilders? What else do they get out of it, do you think? Well, there aren't many other rewards they could get. Perhaps they could get a job as a coach in some studio teaching, where uh, looking well physically is an assist to their job. Uh, there aren't many jobs like that available in Ireland, so I would imagine their rewards are pretty small for the amount of work they put into it. Would you agree that competitions of this sort are the counterpart of beauty competitions that, that women go in for? Well, I agree that they are a counterpart, all right, but uh, I wouldn't say like you're coming round again to saying that they're just like women vain and we're liable to have tears and hair pulling in the dressing room. Well, that sort of thing doesn't go on. They're all uh, sensible men. And they, as I've said, they put in the work, train very hard. The amount of weight lifted during the week runs into tons. Paddy, why do you do this bodybuilding? Well, it keeps me feeling pretty active myself. You know? It keeps me generally fit. Like, but you could keep fit in other ways without going to these extremes, surely. Well, I suppose it depends an awful lot on person how much how active you have been previous to this. Personally, I, I did years of competitive swimming. I feel like it's a way of retirement, so I do it been too exhausting. Yeah? So you didn't start off on this because you were underweight or anything like no, that? No, no. Do, do you find that people outside this sport of bodybuilding admire it? Well, I, I think some people do gen generally, but uh, others are inclined to very critical about it, like, you know, particularly they, if you see them, on, if they expect if they see on a beach that you're parading, but they don't really be necessarily, you know. Well, are, are you seeking admiration? Not particularly, you know, it's self-satisfaction of development and feeling and well-being. Christy, was there any one thing that you can recall that started you off on this bodybuilding? Well, I was slightly underweight, and I hadn't got much time. I never had an interest in any other sport, not really. did a little bit of football, and that's all. And it has obviously added weight to oh, you. Yes, definitely. What do you think about when you're competing in these competitions, these Mr. Ireland competitions? Well, I get a good kick out of it, for a start. I think it's a bit of a laugh. There's no really serious intent then, is there? Or do, or do you take it seriously? I take it serious as regards training, and uh, then we take it serious going in for the competitions, all right, definitely. Well, what about girls? What's their reaction to all this muscle? Well, some girls like muscle men, but generally speaking, they a lot of girls don't like the huge muscles or anything like that, you know? Why do you think this is? Well, they think they're grotesque, some of them. And, uh, well, they all have their own ideas. Well, now, when you judge competitions of this sort, just what are you looking for? Well, you look for all over proportionate development. 
No extremism like huge arms and huge legs developed to the neglect of the rest of the physique. He must be all over well developed uh, with a proportionate physique. Well, do you go up with a, a tape measure and measure, say, his biceps or his calves or his thighs? No, that wouldn't be necessary at all. It, generally, you're able to see quite clearly a winner. He picks himself because he hasn't neglected any aspect of his bodybuilding. He's paid attention to every little detail, calves, abdominals, arms. In short, he really neglects nothing. He's like an artist trying to sculpture a statue. He wants to do a really good job. Well, is it important that he should be able to isolate certain muscles and flex them? Yes, it's to his advantage. For instance, he could fool the judge by displaying his very best points and not showing uh, lesser points that he has neglected. But generally, a judge can find uh, these faults. Well, what about colouring or tan or general height? How, how important are these? Well, in some cases we have two height classes. We won't have this the weekend, in which we would cater for the under five foot six man, for instance, and we would have the over five foot six, which would take into consideration the bigger man. Uh, as regards tan, tan is very helpful because a man looks a lot healthier and harder and fit.